Today, we're looking at Diamine's Scarlet. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Diamine's Scarlet is a red ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples, I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Retro 51 with a, or a Retro 51 Tornado with a broad nib to take my notes for this video. Now, before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is this kind of pink tone pushing its way up that gets a little bit darker, but then we get this actual scarlet red across the top. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And that pinkish, maybe pinkish magenta tone is still there in the same way. The line across the bottom is a little more permanent and we still very easily see that scarlet that is across the top of it. Only difference we're really seeing here is a slightly darker line on the bottom. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. Now, I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself decently well. That extra fine becomes about a medium in writing, but it's not blown out, blurry, or difficult to read. Safe to use as a note taker. Water is reactivating and lifting almost all of this ink off. Now it's not a white dot. What I see is how much of it is coming off and I see the beginnings of the white page. But what I see is a very light pink that is still very much staying there. Pen flush though is completely removing. It's creating a lot of white of the paper coming through. I easily see the rhodia dots from the paper. It makes me say that pen flush is all that I would need. One third bleach solution is completely removing it, as would be expected. A little bit of yellow staining, that's more from the bleach than the ink, but I don't think you would need bleach to get this out of your pen. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diamine Scarlet has a viscosity of 2.68, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diamine's Scarlet has an average dry time of 16 seconds, making it normal. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I pick this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shading, the extra fine is the exact same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 8 seconds to dry. The medium is the exact same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. In the smear test, you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Tomoy River. We get no bleeding. We do get some ghosting, of course. It's not too bad with this ink. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade. I'm looking at the color and how the colors altered some for being on this cream background paper. It's interesting. It goes from this cool red to red pinkish. The extra fine is a slightly lighter tone than the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Now the medium is back to the darker tone of the 1.1. 
and the extra fine is only like one tone off. It's not like it's very far off at all. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 22 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show is no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. And the smear test, you know what? I think you could recover that. Yeah, if you smear, you can recover that. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 10 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 15 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't get any in the smear test. You could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. This is a perfectly boring ink. It does very well at giving a very consistent color all the way through. White lines paper. We get a lot of bleed spots. The extra fine's not so bad. The medium gets a whole lot more. The 1.1 is crazy. I don't know that you could use the back of this page. That might be even too distracting for me. A lot of ghosting, a lot of bleeding, but it doesn't touch the page underneath. The 1.1 has spread. It has tiny feathers all over it. It has no halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1. And it performs best with the extra fine. With the extra fine, it has no feathering and no spread, no halo, sheen, no shade. Only one second to dry, super fast. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. The medium has no spread, but it has tiny feathering selectively throughout. So areas where you go over the writing more than once in a heavier way, like the up and down of the K, the up and down of the B, the up and down of the F, those areas have some feathering, the other areas not. No halo, sheen, no shade, one second to dry. Now these one seconds are very different. I always just round to my nearest second when I'm counting. I don't try and do parts of it. The scrubby for both show is no color variation and we got none. And we look at the smear test. You could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Original crown mill. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread. Halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a significantly lighter tone than the 1.1. This is the most variation I've seen in color for this ink. The extra fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. The medium is a significantly darker tone. It is just a tone lighter than the 1.1. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, eight seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium show no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. And the smear test still you could recover this if you smear while you're writing. P. Berger, it's a student grade French rule paper. A lot of bleeding, a lot of ghosting because of it. But it doesn't come all the way through and touch the page underneath, but you could not use the back of this page. The 1.1 has spread an, an incredible amount of feathering. Incredible. Letters are completely feathering in together, like in diamine. The A and the M and the I are all completely feathered together. Horrible. No halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade. It took one second to dry. The medium is the same tone as the 1.1 and the extra fine. The medium has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. No shade, four seconds to dry. It's amazing how different that they really do perform despite what we're seeing here. But look at how much more bleed goes with the 1.1. Four seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium show us no color variation and we got none. And the smear test, I do not think you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like diamine scarlet, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a nice green, and I went with Private Reserve's Foam Green. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe.
So what do I think of Thiamine's Scarlet? This is a very nice red on the paper that is not your standard red. That to me is what makes it nice because the standard reds I don't typically care for. Scarlet's on the other hand, that's actually the red that I like the most. This is a very nice ink for me as someone that I don't just tend to like the standard red that so many people want to go after. Thanks for watching.